Hi everyone, Matt from the pre-sales team at Net Support here and today I'm back with another install video for you where we're going to be taking a look at how to install our desktop alerting and notification product, Net Support Notify. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is get some installers and how you do that is going to depend on if you're looking to trial the software or if you've already purchased. So if you are looking to install a trial, if you head over to the website netsupportnotify.com and if you scroll down on the home page, click on the try for free button, pop in your details there, and that will then take you through to a page where you can download the required installers. Now, this is a completely free trial. We're not going to ask you for any credit card details or anything like that. Now, if you've already purchased, if you head over to our uh, support site, so if you go to the netsupportsoftware.com website and click on the support link, sign in, you'll be taken to a page that looks a little bit like this. If you click on my products, you might have the net support notified product showing. If not, if you click on register a product, register your license details, come back here, you'll be able to click on the net support notify link. And then you'll be taken through to a page where you can download the installers. So we've got a setup.exe for manual installs and an MSI for automated deployment. So if you're going to deploy using something like Intune Group Policy SCCM. Now, if you want to install the product in a language other than English, click on the relevant flag and that will take you to the relevant language installers. So you've hopefully now downloaded the install files, but before we start on the installation, I want to talk a little bit about the different components of Notify. So there are basically three components to the software. So first of all is what we call the Notify Gateway component. And this is what everything connects to. It routes the messages across your network. Secondly, we have the Notify console, and that is the part of the software that allows you to send messages. And finally, we have the Notify agent, and the agent allows machines where it's installed to receive messages. So what I'm going to be using today is three virtual machines. So I've got a server where we're going to be installing the gateway. And on these other two machines, we're going to install the console and agent on one and just do an agent install on the final one. So the first thing we're going to do is install the Notify Gateway component. So I'm here on my server virtual machine. I've got my install files on this folder on the desktop. So if we jump in here, you can see I've got both the MSI and uh, EXE in this folder. I've also got my license key file. Now, if you're doing a trial install, you're obviously not going to have this, but don't worry, it will create a trial license uh, during the install process. However, if you have purchased the software, if you pop this license key alongside the installer, it will apply the license when you uh, do the install on the server. So as we do in a manual install, I'm going to use the setup uh, exe file here. So we'll just double click on that, give it a second to load up. So click on next here, accept the license agreement, and then you're going to want to select this bottom option here. So we're just going to install the, uh, the server component. Click on next, and it's going to ask you for some information. So first thing is the server IP address or host name. So that needs to be um, the IP address or host name of the server you're installing on. Now, if you are going to use the IP address, make sure that the server you're installing on has a static IP address. Otherwise, you're going to get into some trouble down the line. I'm just going to use the host name here. So my server is just called demo server. Next, we have the port. So by default, this is set to port 443. Now, you can leave this as it is, but if you need to change this, perhaps port 443 is already in use on the server that you're installing on, you can change this to any available port. So I'm going to use port 3085. Ignore this um, secondary um, IP address and host name and secondary port uh, option. That's outside the scope of this video. If you want some more information on what this does, contact our support team and they'll be able to help you. And then finally, we need to enter a gateway key. Now, this gateway key is a security feature. So what it does is it prevents just anything from being able to connect to your server. Any consoles or agents connecting will need this key to authenticate against the server. So this can be anything you want. So I'm going to pop in a key here. 
Now this key is stored using unreversible encryption. So if you forget it, you're not going to be able to phone up our support team and just ask them to tell you what it is. So do make sure you make a note of this. If you do happen to forget it, we can help you get back up and running again, but it is quite a sort of long and drawn out process. So you're best off not forgetting it in the first place. If you've got some password vault or some way of uh, securely storing it, I strongly recommend you make a note of that in there in case you need to refer to it later. So once you've popped all that information in, click on next and then install. And just give this a few seconds to run through and do the install process. And then when that's done, we can click on finish. And you will see that we've got an icon in the uh, system tray there. So you might have seen there it had a little uh, yellow exclamation mark on. That's now gone to a green tick. So that means that the server component is installed and it's all running correctly. So now we've got the server component set up, I've jumped to my second virtual machine and on this machine we're going to install both the console and the agent. So if you remember the console allows us to send messages and the agent allows us to receive them. So just as before I've got my install files in this folder on the desktop so if we just uh, double click on that and double click on the exe, say yes to the UAC prompt and then just give this a second to load up the installer. And just before, click on next, agree to the license, and then we're gonna to want to select to install both the agent and the console, click on next. Then we come to this familiar screen. So in the server IP address or host name, you're going to want to e enter either the IP address or the host name of the uh, server you've just installed the server components on. So I'm going to enter in demo server on there. For the server port, whatever port you selected previously, so I'm going to enter 3085. Just as before, uh, ignore the um, secondary IP address, host name and secondary port options. For the gateway key, we're going to want to enter the gateway key we just set up. So I'm going to pop that in there twice. And then finally, we've got this additional field called department. Now, what this allows you to do is group agent machines together to make it a little bit easier when you're targeting messages. So, for example, um, you might put all the machines in tech support into a department called tech support. You need to send a message just to the people in that department. You can target the department rather than having to select the individual machine. So we'll call this tech support here. So click on next and then install and just give that a moment or two to install the components there. That's all done. Click on finish. And then if I go into my program menu, we can see I've got a shortcut for the console here. So if we load this up, we should be able to send a message to ourselves. So let's just maximize that. So really quick and easy, just call this test and we'll pop in my test message. Click on send. And you'll see here that I've got a um, sort of a, a folder or department called tech support. So you imagine if there was multiple machines here, I could just click here and it would select everything in that particular department. So if I click on send, give that a second. And there we go. There's my message sending. So everything is working correctly and as expected. So on this final machine, I'm just going to install the notify agents. This machine will only be able to receive messages. So it might be that in your organization, you want to give a few people the ability to send, um, but you want to give everybody the ability to receive messages. So just as before on this machine, I've got my install files in this folder on the desktop. So if we load up, double click on the setup exe. And you should be familiar with this by now. So we click on next, agree to the license and just select the agent component. Click on next. 
pop in the name of our server. So this is demo server. Change that port, leave these two values blank. Enter our key. And we'll pop this one in a different department. So we'll pop this into sales. So click on next and install there. We'll give this a moment to run through. And click on finish. And if we jump back to the previous machine with the console on, call this message test two and message my second test go to send now and you'll see that I've got two departments so I've got the tech support department we set up on this machine and the one we've just done is in sales so if I just wanted to target sales I can click next to the name there click on send we'll get a notification here saying that that message has gone out and if we jump to the machine you can see we've successfully received the message there So the next thing I'm going to show you is the emergency response message feature. And what this is, is a predefined message that can be triggered with a key combination and sent out to selected machines across your network. So in the event of an emergency, you can get a message out there quickly. Somebody doesn't have to spend time typing it and deciding who it needs to be sent to. Now, this feature is all handled by the agent. So if you want to give somebody access to this, you don't need to install the console on their machine. So we're on the VM where I just installed the agent and in order to set up the emergency response message, if we jump into the file manager, into the C drive, program files x86, net support, net support notify. And if we double click on this agent config and then select emergency response. So the first thing we're gonna do is tick the uh, send an emergency response. So this is going to allow the user on this machine to trigger. Next, we need to enter a message. So we'll just say lockdown, please stay where you are and wait for further instructions. Next, we need to choose the key combination we're going to use. So you have to use the escape key. You can then select from one of shift, control or alt. So I'm going to use control and then you can pick one of the arrow keys. So I'm just going to leave that as the uh, as the default as the up arrow. Now, you can have this set up to trigger with just two key presses. So I could just have this um, being escape and the up arrow. I recommend you use three, though, because it means there's less likelihood of the message being triggered in error. This option here, show feedback when the message is sent. So what this will do is it will pop up a little uh, toast icon uh, to confirm the message has been sent. It does require the system tray icon. Now, depending on how you've got Windows configured, um, the system tray icon might be hidden as it is on my machine here. So let's enable that. So if you right click on the, uh, the taskbar, go into your taskbar settings. And then if we go to other system tray icons, and we find notify and we just switch that on there. So we'll enable that feature. Notification size, so you can have the message showing normal size, double size or full screen. I'm just gonna leave it as normal size. And then you've got the option to allow the machine to receive emergency response messages. So I could just tick this and not configure uh, any of the above options. If I didn't want the user on this machine to be able to trigger the message, I just wanted them to receive it. So I'm going to tick this on here as well. Click on OK and you will get this error message and it will jump you to the general tab. Um, it's going to ask me to put in the server key again. This is a security feature, so somebody can't just come in and here, start messing about with the settings unless they've got access to the, uh, the server key, which will allow them to save them. So just pop in our server key here, click on OK, and this will save the settings. It will restart the agent service. And then if we just minimize that, and if I press uh, escape, control and up, let's 
telling me it's sending the emergency response message there. So we just give that a second. And there we go. That is what that would look like. So I've actually sent that to myself, but that message would then be going out across uh, the network to any machines I'd set up to receive the emergency response. So the final thing I want to show you in this video is how to package up the application for an automated deployment via Intune, Group Policy, SCCM. And what I've done here is I've created two packages to reflect what we've done in this video. So we've got a package that will install the console and the agent and one that will just install the agent by itself. So if we open up the um, console and agent package, you can see that I've got my MSI installer. I've also added in my license key. If you're just using this software under a trial, you're not going to have this. Don't worry about it. It will create an evaluation license when it does the install. So it's not going to be a problem having that file missing. And then you'll see there are a couple of other files in this folder. So first of all, we've got this nsn.ini file. And what this does is it dictates which components we're going to install. Obviously, it's a, um, an automated install. We're not going to have the little window pop up where we can tick the components we want. So they're specified in this any file. So a one means the component will be installed. A zero means it won't. So as we're doing an agent and console install, I've changed this file. So we've got a one next to the agent and the console. The second file I've got in here is this config.dat and this file contains all the configuration for the agent. So it will have the server connection information in there. If I've set up the emergency response message, it will um, contain all the uh, configuration for that. And it will apply this configuration during install. So your agent will be um, sort of pre-configured. You're not going to have to do any further work to get the agent configured as you want. Now, it's not possible to do that for the console. So once you push the software out, you're either going to have to manually configure the console or it's possible to push a conf uh, console configuration out via group policy, which I'll try and do another video to explain. But in the meantime, if you want some help with that, get in touch with our support team and they'll be able to guide you through that process. Now, you're probably going to want to know where to get these two files from. So they can be obtained from the program files directory. So we can see here you want to go if we just jump back up. So it will be C, program files x86, net support, net support notify. So we've got our any file can be copied from here. And then the config.dat is also in this folder as well. So obviously with the config.dat, configure the agent first. Once you're happy with the configuration, then make a copy of that file to pop in to your uh, deployment package folder. So just to show you the one for the agent, exactly the same. So I've got the same four files, but in this any file, I've only got the agent uh, set up. So this won't install the, uh, the console there. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you all again soon.